Hi, I'm Karen Poole and I'm here today to begin a series of videos on collage. I really enjoy collage. I came to it fairly recently after doing a lot of painting and drawing. And the way I got into it was my favorite medium actually is pencil drawing. And I was looking for a way to spice up, punch up, add some more interest to my drawings and so I began experimenting with collage and another reason was that collage seems to be very amenable to a fanciful style whereas sometimes the more traditional mediums seem to call for a more traditional subject so that's why I do collage and I've come to really love it and I'm inspired to share some of my knowledge with you. So the first thing to talk about is the support for the collage. And I work on, most of the time, quarter inch thick, medium density fiberboard, or sometimes it's called hardboard. You can buy this at Home Depot. I imagine you can buy it at Lowe's as well, um, in two foot by four foot sheets. That's how I purchase it and I cut it myself at home to whatever size I want, although you can also have Home Depot cut it for you. When you buy your hardboard, be sure that you get a piece that's smooth on both sides. By mistake, at one point I bought one that's textured on the back and I don't like it because it makes it difficult to finish the back nicely and I think it's important to have the edges in the back finished as well as the front. So, tip, make sure both sides are smooth. This piece is 8 by 10, um, and I prepared it to work on by, first of all, spraying it with a spray primer, spray primer that I also got at Home Depot. And when you get your primer, be sure that it is primer only. Now they have primer and paint, and you want just the primer. So I spray it on both sides and the edges with the primer and then on the side I'm going to work on as well as the edges I add a coat of acrylic gesso. This gives me a really nice surface to work on. So my next step would be to kind of decide on a theme and assemble some pieces that I'm likely to use in the collage. So I started this one I love animals. My subjects are almost always animals. I did a little drawing of a fox. And then I began to look through my magazines to get some, some inspiration for what I might add to the collage along with her. By the way, she's a drawing now, but she will be finished in color. So I started looking through the magazine and I found some really nice pieces of foliage um, here's a nice one with leaves and flowers. These two pieces are actually embroidery from a tablecloth, but um, I really like the design and the colors also with the lavenders of the flowers. I found a couple of maidenhair ferns in different interesting containers. And then I found this fabulous thing, with, which is so strong in, in design and movement and so on. So this is going to, I think, feature pretty prominently in the piece. So now I have not only my subjects, foliage, and my fawn, but also my color, main colors, which are green and purple. So in addition to those, I found this really beautiful paper guest towel with all different kinds of butterflies on it and I have torn out one of the butterflies probably to use. I have a group of these pretty postage stamps with butterflies on them. I got these on Etsy. I just searched for vintage postage stamps butterflies and there were lots to choose from so and I picked these out from the selections that I bought because I think the colors are going to work for me. 
I also have from the magazine pieces whose colors I really liked that I thought I might be able to use. This one in particular, this is really pretty. So those are available for me if I decide to use them. I also very much like this piece from a piece of scrapbook paper. I love the text and this swirl. And also the edge is perforated. Even if I wanted to use the paper, if I did it first, I could turn it over and use the edges as a stencil. And then I may or may not use this piece of tissue paper. And this tissue paper I stenciled with um, gesso and then I put watercolor washes over it and the watercolor, the gesso um, repels the watercolor so you end up with an image of whatever color gesso you use. Sometimes I'll mix a color of paint in with the gesso um, or actually just use acrylic paint and then then the watercolor washes and when amazingly when you use it in um, your collage the colors even though they're watercolor they don't um, run so you know something like that I don't know might be pretty so we'll see we'll see about using this hmm now I'm thinking Maybe I really want to do want to use it right in the beginning. So let's lay out a couple of things and get the old creative juices flowing. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to use the tissue paper to begin with. Okay, so from the pieces that I cut out for the collage, or selected for the collage. I chose some paint colors that I think are going to go quite nicely. And I'm going to, first of all, paint a background over the whole piece. So I'm going to um, squeeze these three colors out on my palette. By the way, I like using this Americana paint, acrylic paint by Deco Art because it's nice and opaque. When you want an opaque paint, this is this works really well, really well. So there are my three colors. And I'm just going to start Kind of randomly spinning them on and mixing them in among each other with each other as I go. So I think that's already kind of pretty, and we'll let that dry. And I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I've painted the base. Um, used three different colors, although they're also they're so close to each other that you know it just gives a little texture. So now I'm going to start with the first collage elements, which are going to be my main guy, this pretty one, and a couple others. So first of all, I want to tell you that the product I like to use for the adhesion on the collage is Liquitex Matte Gel. Um, it dries nicely. It's translucent. What I like about it most of all, though, is that it gives a really, really nice surface for painting over. Um, so it is 
one of my favorites. One of my favorite things. I don't think I could, I couldn't do collage without it, no. Actually, now I'm kind of wondering if maybe I will use, okay, anyway, enough. So I know I want this about here, and I'm going to have this up in this corner. Now, when I remove these pieces from the magazine, I just cut the edges just to, you know, get the main shape. But what I'm going to do to actually put them on the collage is to rip them. I like, I prefer, generally I prefer the ripped edges. And I want to show you a little trick here that when you, oops, oh shoot. It's not, that's bad. Not ripping on the fold. So, so much for that trick. Not much of a trick. Gosh. Okay, we'll just go with that. Um, so, usually if you fold it a couple times, then you can rip it pretty nicely, but this one just doesn't want to cooperate. All right, anyway, that'll go up in the corner, but I don't want all this, so I'm going to tear this away. Not real precise, just want to get rid of some of that blank space as well as the... Um, cut edge. The cut edge, to my way of thinking, just makes too much of a um, straight line, which I don't like. Okay. So, magazine pieces can sometimes um, can't think of the word. Buckle up, warp on you. So to prevent that or to mitigate that, I like to get the back wet. Cover it with the um, medium, the gel medium. And then again, gel medium on the area you're going to place it on. Now you will hear people tell you to smooth it with a um, credit card. I don't do that. I just use the brush. And this is giving you some of that matte medium on top of the piece as well, which is just what you want. So you see that the edges are nice and irregular. Okay, now the matte medium is translucent when it's wet, so it's kind of obscuring the image, but when that dries, that image will be crisp again. Um, the, by the way, I did the drawing on Strathmore mixed media paper. It's nice and heavy and it takes a lot of water without buckling up. So really um, highly recommend it for drawings or paintings that you're going to use in your collage. Once again, the medium on the back and on the front and, and not quite go to the edge. Or actually, I think I'm going to move it even a little further. Now, the um, mixed media paper is, like I said, thick, 
and it is made up of several different layers. Here's the piece that I tore this guy out of. Um, and you can see maybe on this piece, this edge, it's pretty rough. When you, t when you tear, the piece that you're tearing down from is going to have this edge, this nice edge on the front. On the back is this raggedy edge. So if I tear down, and let's say this is the right side, I'm going to get this nice edge. If I tear up, I'm going to get this edge that shows the different layers. So just keep that in mind when you're tearing. Um, what type of edge do you want? Um, the next pieces I have are these little edges. And um, I'm once again going to rip them. Now this one, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to have a border of some sort on this piece. So because this design is so close to the edge of the, of the page, if I put this right against the edge, then when I do my border, I'm going to lose a lot of those flowers. So instead, I'm going to bring it in a little bit, just like I did the fox, um, kind of trying to guesstimate where my border on my finished piece will be. So put um, the medium on the back. Put the medium where it's going to go. lay this down. You will notice that another thing that can happen with these magazine pages is that as they absorb the moisture from the medium they become kind of transparent so you see a little bit of what's on the back but when it all dries that will go away. You won't see the back anymore. Okay, so where's the other little piece? Here it is. Okay, this one, really like this piece. I wish it weren't so dark there, because um, I really like the flowers, and I would like to see more of those, but it's not going to work with that dark streak, so may as well just accept that, and get rid of it. And this I'll put up, let's see, yeah, I'll put it up there. So now I don't have in mind exactly what the finished piece is going to be. I, I'm just working layer by layer going with what looks good to me at the time. It's going to be many layers on this collage and it will change over time. And one of the things that's kind of frustrating is you know, you get something you really like down on that first layer, and very likely it's going to end up at least partially covered. I'm not sure I put medium over the fox and make sure that I've got that. Okay, now, a little bit of thought. Um, The maidenhair ferns, I pretty much want to use on top of her when she's painted, so I'm not going to put those on at this point. Um, I might try, I might try a little, let's see how some of this might look. The tissue paper.
Well, I don't want to cover the, um, those purple flowers. But it can go there. might be too much, but if it is, cover it up later. And, you know, it went over the edge a little bit, but that's okay, because I will remove it later, remove the edge later. Um, well, we'll just keep going. It's just, it really is um, trial and error. You put something down. If you don't like it, if you decide you don't like it soon enough, you can probably pull it back up. Um, otherwise, just do something over it later. And everything will be fine. So I'm going to put this here. Well, that's okay. Got a wrinkle. A little break. No problem. And I think I might even put the butterfly on at this point. Now, the thing about using napkins or these little paper guest towels are that they're multi-ply. And you have to get down to just the top ply before you glue it down, or else you'll end up with a big mess. It's kind of cool because the bottom layer has just this tiny little, I'm going to save that, not the bottom layer, the middle layer, it has the lightest possible impression of the butterfly, which I might end up using again later. So for now, where is he going to go? He's going to go... I like it there, I think. The tissue paper is very, very thin, so you want to be careful to, not the tissue paper, this, um, napkin paper, the one ply, very thin, so you don't want to rub it around a lot. See, now I'm all overdoing it, getting wrinkles. Okay. Um, is that it for now? I don't know. Kind of like that. Um, Okay. That's all I'm going to do for this layer. I'm going to let it dry thoroughly. And the next step probably is going to be to paint the fox. So um, that's it for now. See you next time.